Well, I, I think the permaculture of the inner landscape I, I, is really about how we not just focus on how to reorganise uh, the garden and the built environment and all of those things, but also how we feel about things and how we respond to uh, people and situations and, uh, and for a lot of people um, spiritual meaning in that as well. Uh, and the connection of course between outer health and inner health is, is very strong. So uh, the way we feel about those things and the way we respond to those things is always really important. But I think increasingly, as people become more familiar with permaculture design principles, they're finding that, well, these actually do apply in that domain as well. Permaculture for me is common sense. It's really about how we design our environments for not just gardening, but communities and buildings and uh, even financial systems. So for me to bring that right back, um, obviously to my, my home and garden, but right back to myself as well. And for me, unless I'm doing my inner gardening, I'm not so able to do my work and my gardening in the world. Well, I've always seen permaculture as applying to anything that people need to be cared for. It's a system of doing the nuts and bolts thing that leave you and your family and your community and your world a cared for creature, cared for place. So I've never really distinguished between permaculture for the garden and permaculture for inside your house or inside your communication or even inside your thinking. For me it's all the same principles. Don't use force. Um, persuade the world to give you what you need instead of taking it. Um, don't avoid compaction at any cost whether it's compaction of the soil, or compacting your body, or compacting your thoughts. Um, how you do anything is how you do everything. That is, I think, the, the strength, that they are not just uh, in the outer realm. And in a way, my own articulation of permaculture design principles made that more clear, that these are not just a sort of a, a physical site design tool, but they, they address how we think and respond to things, how we uh, position ourselves and uh, even right back in the early days of, of permaculture teaching, of course Bill Mollison talked about the attitudinal principles, that a lot of it is in the way we see things and of course the permaculture maxim of, of the problem is the solution, that you know, we change the way we look at something and as he famously quoted, you don't have an ex um, a plague of snails, you just have a deficiency of ducks. So all of these ways that we look at things are not so much constrained by the climate or the soil, but uh, our attitude. And, and, and that comes, of course, most strongly in the first principle of observe and interact. Through that process, we are, we are actually changing ourselves as much as we are changing the environment. I was involved with permaculture sort of from the beginning, I guess, and I went to a lot of the early conferences, in, in, particularly in North America, and I saw people talking about permaculture like something to do out there, and yet I saw there was still a lot of um, negative behaviours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it and I just had this sort of phrase came to my mind one day. I thought, you, you know, to have permaculture out there, you need to have permaculture in here. <laughs> and so I started using the phrase permaculture of the inner landscape, thinking that, you know, if you've got that um, healthy, diverse, multi-storey, um, integrated system out there, we need to have that going on inside us, um, which is, you know, not a sort of monocultural way of thinking about things, but a more diverse, integrated, um, mutually supportive 
way of functioning internally. I think that that's always been part of permaculture, that I, I, I forget now, is that zone zero or zone one in the permaculture principle? David will be able to uh, t tell you that, but uh, um, that's right, it, 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 without, that, that we have to take care of our immediate neighbourhood and nothing is more immediate than that, and then the order that we can find there or that we can establish there has a chance of radiating out and of rippling out. I'd been part of permaculture since the early 80s and, and deep ecology and you know really really starting a journey of finding a deeper connection with myself and with the planet, with the earth, rather than just an intellectual the earth needs saving sort of thing. And permaculture was my whole life for a really long time and I felt that it was serving me in lots of ways and that I was able to serve and give to the planet. But there was a time where I realised that unless permaculture had some spiritual basis to it, that it, it couldn't be my whole life anymore. And I use the word spiritual in a very broad sense. I feel like spiritual and spirituality is a word that has quite bad PR, really, and it can put people off. So I hesitate to use the word um, because I like to be really inclusive of everybody. And my sense within permaculture is it, it's such common sense. It's based on the principles of nature. And nature is spiritual in lots of ways. Um, any of the traditional peoples connected to the earth um, bring through the, the deepest spirituality and it's, it's all different in, in any culture but it, it has a really similar thread to it and it's about respect. Can you explain how Aboriginal people have a spiritual connection with the earth whereby damaging the earth is also hurts you spiritually whereas a modern man believes in a spiritual connection with some heaven sort of you know, outside of Earth, yeah? And, um, and do you think this spiritual separation from the Earth, of which we are, we are made, is a major cause of our apathy towards or destruction of nature? That's a beautiful question because really our spirit only goes to the height the bird flies. Anything beyond that is one's imagination. Everything that's of important to us as human beings, we believe, is here. It's here, right beside us. It's here on the land we're walking on. It's here with the trees around us. It's here and there we breathe, in the water we drink. And that's the creator energy, why quite often we would refer as the chukupa. And some people might even refer to that energy of that super consciousness as God, or call it other things. But ours is so here, it's not no more than the height of the fly, the highest bird. It is so much part of who we are that we have to care for that, for our own survival. Because its survival depends on us and our survival depends on it. We are all indigenous people when we go back to our root of where we come from.